What's happening, you bad motherfuckers? It's a beautiful day to be alive. It's Wednesday, the 26th of May. The joint is brought to you by Zip Recruiter. This one goes out to all the busy moms out there. Did you know recent data shows that all female-owned businesses, one in three is owned by a mom? You didn't know that, neither did I. How does a mom find time to hire their business while juggling a family? You want to tell me? Zip Recruiter, that's how. And right now you can try Zip Recruiter for free. Free, free, free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Joey. Here's the story. Talia Goldstein is a mother of two. And she's also the founder of a matchmaking company, Three Day Rule. Her business is constantly growing and she needs to hire new matchmakers every month. That's a tough role to fill. So who does she call? Zip Recruiter, that's who, the matchmaker for matchmakers. Their powerful matching technology will help you find the right people with the right experience and actively invites them to apply. She's not the only one. Four out of five employers who post on Zip Recruiter get a quality candidate between the first day, within the first day. Now that's results. So what Italia did, she got on Zip Recruiter. So right now, you can try Zip Recruiter for free. Free, free, free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Joey. Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash Joey. Try it for free. What do you got to lose? You got a small business. This is the way to go. Four out of five businesses pick ZipRecruiter. They're tremendous. What else do you need to hear? Try it for free just by going to ZipRecruiter.com slash Joey. ZipRecruiter. The smartest way to hire. The joint is also brought to you by CBD Lion. Let me tell you something. They have some new gummies that are fucking tremendous. They're uh, the melatonin slash CBD gummies. Let me tell you something. I fucking eat those, and an hour later, I am out, nappy, new, new style. If you've noticed, I haven't been making the Michael Jackson tea. Why do I? I got the melatonin from CBD Lion, and it don't stop there. Whether it's the cream, whether it's the bath balls, whether it's the CBD flower they have now, if you want to smoke it. I mean, listen, that tape, I don't even have any tape left because I used it all on my knee. That's how good that tape is. CBD Lion brings you the best CBD available. This ain't no gas station. This ain't no fucking guy in a liquor store. Go to CBDLion.com right now. Read the third-party lab results and get back to me, cocksuckers. Go to CBD Lion. Pick a CBD that works for you. Press in Joey or Church and get 20% off delivered right to your fucking house. No more going to a liquor store or some fucking CBD store where they don't know dick about dick. With CBD Line, read the website. I told you guys, I go with sponsors per their website. If their website is informative and it takes you to where it needs to be, that gives me more of an opportunity to love that fucking sponsor even more. And that's what CBD Line does. But it starts with you reading. Go to CBDLine.com right now. Press and Joey your church and get 20% off your first order. Let's get this motherfucking party started. It's Wednesday, bitches. We got no time to fuck around. What's happening, you bad motherfuckers? The Wu Tang Clan ain't, ain't nothing to fuck, fuck with. with. It's Wednesday, the twenty sixth of May. A beautiful fucking day to be alive. I'm feeling great. Twenty three days with no weed, and I still I don't know any differences. Mm -hmm. I, I, nothing. I, I wish I could say to you that I'm running Swiss Alps and shit. I mean, I've been working out. I've been eating the same. I'm doing the same shit. I just 
Uh, I'm going to keep it up to the 30 day mark and then we'll smoke on camera. I'll gag for you guys and fucking pass out hopefully, or then we'll give it another 30 days. We're going to, we're going to ride this bus out until the tolerance gets lower. I heard through a rumor mill that when New Jersey sells weed anyway, they're only going to sell 10% weed. That's as high as they're going to go. That's the word on the street. I don't know how true it is or whatever, but uh, (laughs) it's not going to be fucking good. So I'm letting these Jersey people know now that you better let your tolerance go down a little bit and stop buying that fucking California shit because if they're going to keep these numbers low (laughs) at 10%, that's just a little bit more than fucking Susquehanna weed. (laughs) I think Susquehanna starts at 12. So I don't know what Jersey's going to be fucking selling. So... But it's been a great couple of days. Listen, man, going to L.A. was the best thing I fucking did because now I know where I belong. I know that I'm home. I got a home. Uh, you know, I miss a lot of my friends. I miss a lot of the things, but not really. The life that I've created here in the last nine months has been great. And you could see it on my face. You could see it in my eyes. You know, don't get old. That's what sucks. Getting old gets sucks. So... For two weeks, I was waking up, and I swear to God, I didn't say nothing to you guys because I didn't want to, you know, worry you guys. I got enough problems as it is. I'd wake up in the morning, and I'd have to spit because I got the sleep apnea mask, and my mouth would be dry. I'd get up 10 times a night. I'd, de- I'd drink a fuck. You know, you could die if you're old, over 50. You better drink a glass of fucking water before you go to bed because you don't want to dehydrate in the middle of the night and die. I didn't know that either. I would stop drinking water at 6. I'd go to bed. I'd be seeing fucking mirages because if you the more water you drink, the more you got to pee. Then I'm up and down all night fucking peeing, and that sucks dick too. So I wouldn't drink water, and then in the middle of the night, I'm seeing fucking mirages. I'm on the desert seeing a donkey and a fucking <laughs> Arab or some shit. So I said, fuck, I read some. No, I did some reading up on it, and then you got to drink a big glass of water before you go to bed, but when I still wake up in the morning, I got the sleep apnea mask, and I would feel something on the bottom of my teeth, and I would spit, and it was fucking pure blood. So right away, you know, I just got a call a few weeks ago, one of my dear friends has cancer, so now you you think, well, it's the pandemic, the luck of the pandemic, you know, fucking bro- broke his fucking shoulder, this guy did this, this guy did that, <laughs> this guy's mother, everybody had bad luck during this fucking thing, So I'm like, maybe I got fucking cancer. So I told my wife, you know, because I I hid it from her for like a week. And then I finally, she saw the fucking blood in the toilet. And she's like, what is that? And I go, I don't know what's going on whenever I fucking spit. And she goes, show me your mouth. And I showed her, she goes, look at the size of your gums. They're fucking swollen. So I took a picture and I sent it to the dentist in L.A. who had done the original work. And she goes, yeah, your gums don't look too good there. on this side, especially they were up. So I fucking called the dentist here. I made an appointment. They had to go through the whole fucking thing. Are you vaccinated? Do you need a COVID test? I mean, again, I had to go get a fucking COVID test for the fucking dentist. It never ends. I go to the dentist. This motherfucker tells me that he can't go in there because he doesn't want to redo her work or... He doesn't know. I mean, how the fuck don't you know? Oh, this could only happen to me, guys. I'm having the worst fucking luck with doctors in New Jersey ever. So I said, you know what? Don't worry about it. I'm going to L.A. anyway. I called Dr. Sherry. I said, Dr. Sherry, I'm coming in. I'll only be in for a few hours, maybe two days. She goes, as soon as you get off the plane, call me. I have an opening. I'll slip you in. She went over there. She just drilled a little bit down. There was a little bit of blood. And then she flossed, and then she gave me, like, an ointment to put on. And now my gums are back to normal. No problem. Now I wake up this morning, and I got a fucking wart on my finger. How the fuck do you get a wart on your finger? Ah, I've never had a wart in my life. I think it's a wart. I don't fucking know. I've never had a wart in my fucking life. And I think it's a splinter. I think it's a splinter that got infected. But don't get old, because you wake up every morning with a different fucking ailment. I had knee surgery. Want me to tell you something? Everything hurts except my fucking knee. You understand me? I just had knee surgery, but everything else hurts except the fucking knee. My thigh hurts. My calf hurts. I went to Point Pleasant on fucking Sunday. I pulled the fucking thing onto the beach, and sure enough, uh, the next day, my friend's like, sure, your legs hurt. You're not supposed to go on the beach yet. The the beach can't really fucking hold you. The sand. That's the second time I went to the beach, (laughs) and fucking my legs hurt like a mole. My my right leg hurts like a motherfucker. So now I can't go to the beach for another month or two because my fucking leg. I didn't know this. Nobody tells you this shit. So just do me a favor. Don't get old, and if you're young, take care of yourself. 
take care of yourself, drink water, work on your muscles and shit. <laughs> I got the <laughs> This is it's just a fucking nightmare. And then you guys wonder why I take on it and CBD and magnesium. Because you got all these fucking ailments as an old man that you, you know, I talk to Rich Voss every day. That's my brother. I love Rich Voss. He's 60 fucking three years old. He's another guy that lives in a world where ailments, I mean, we talk about our ailments all day. I, I get off the phone with him going, what the fuck did we just talk about? <laughs> fucking fungi toenails and, and fucking colonoscopies and, you know. So your conversation's <laughs> about to change, young guys. You know, like, like when you're 40, you're still talking about pussy and shit. Forget it. Once you get to be like 50, the word pussy don't even come up no more because you know you ain't got nothing to give these young girls. And even if you had the chance, what are you going to do? Show up with that wrinkled up fucking ugly dick. I don't want nobody to see my dick. I'll show anybody my nutsack, but my dick, you never fucking see my dick. Every once in a while, I show it. You know why? Because it's ugly. It's just ugly. It looks like a seal now. It used to look like a dick. Now it looks like a sea whale. You, you ever go to like San Francisco and you see the seals? They're all fucking blubbery and they got that, that weird skin. That's what my dick looks like now. I don't want nobody sucking my dick i don't want nobody looking at it i don't want nobody taking pictures my dick is over after 50 if you're a woman and you're still sucking over 50 year old dick listen i can't help you i can't help you if you didn't get covid that's why because you're sucking dicks over 50 years old i don't even know what it started here today it's just a wednesday i'm in a great fucking mood it's a beautiful day to be alive and i'm happy you guys are fucking doing great enough is enough i've been fucking quiet for the last fucking six months it's time to that's bust right. the fuck out you motherfuckers wanted me you motherfuckers got me you understand me i know there's people on there talking shit online i don't even give a fuck no more it's time for me to start talking shit again i'm pissed Fucking, I had a great weekend, though. i tell you what happened. Sunday night, I had the Knicks. I figured, let me take the hometown crowd. Rule number one, you never bet a team. Let's say you live in Ohio. Don't bet the fucking Bulls. Uh, don't bet the fucking whoever you have that's in Ohio, uh, whatever. I don't even know. I, I can't know. Even, <laughs> Ohio State. Like, Let's say if you live in Ohio, they tell you don't bet local teams. The other Sunday, I woke up. Uh, the Knicks were in the playoff for the first time. They weren't even supposed to be in the playoffs. They were getting points, and I forgot to bet them when the game started. So I went on fucking DraftKings, and they fucking let, let me bet the game, like in the second quarter, getting two points. <laughs> so I'm all excited. I fucking turn the game on. I come home from the party. The Knicks are winning. I'm like, I'm going to win $47 because it's a $50 bet. You win 47 They pushed. So I pushed fucking Saturday night. So Monday, Mercy's got a softball game. I go, fuck it. I'm at the game. My friend shows up. He's like, did you look at the lines tonight? What do you like? I go, I didn't really look at anything. I don't. I don't think the Heat's gonna beat Milwaukee or whatever. Whoever the fuck they played, but I go. I don't like either team. I don't know much about them. So what I'll do is I'll just bet the under, the fucking under loss. So last <laughs> night I had to pull a fucking a degenerate gambler move and I bet fucking Denver giving two and a half again, fifty bucks to win ninety seven. Ba boom, Denver <laughs> won by fucking Denver was given nine and a half. I'm sorry, they ended up winning them by like twenty. Then Tuesday night, I was going to bet the, the fucking Nets. Again. Listen, I love DraftKings for that reason. DraftKings, when you fucking sign up, they send you little emails. Like last week, they sent me an email. Bet a dollar that Stefan whatever isn't going to hit a three-pointer. Are you fucking retarded? A dollar wins you $55. I'm $55 richer. Mm -hmm. You know I bet the fucking dollar. You know I'm, I love all that stupid shit. I told you I was bored, and I told you there's a way to gamble just to have fun, and I'm proving it to you guys. Tonight, I don't know who I'll take. I don't I didn't even look at the fucking games tonight, but tonight I'll go 25 bucks. That's it, 25 to win. <laughs> you know, who cares? Everybody wants to. You think you're really going to make a living off fucking gambling? I love these guys that think they're going to make a living off gambling. I gamble just yeah, every night when you throw on TNT, they got two fucking games. Every night I look at the game for two minutes and I go, I should have bet this game. I would have watched it. Finally, I said, let me bet the fucking game. And I'm not having a bad week, but I tell you, that's the one thing that's fun about DraftKings. And then they're, they're not even sponsoring me today. I'm just telling you, I have a blast with them. I really do. That I don't know anything about fantasy sports. I know nothing about that. When I signed up first, I signed up on the fantasy side. I'm like, what the fuck is this? They have like these dollar pools, and I'm trying to put these teams together, and my budget is too big. I don't even know what the budget is of my fucking team. So I said, <laughs> I transferred my money over from fantasy to sports betting, and I've been having a good time. That's what I wanted to tell you. Anyway, going to California last week was a very good move for me because I felt ever since I got over the fucking jet lag and the fucking not sleeping for two days and 
the whole thing. It's been a lot better. I've slowed down on the tea also, if you've noticed. You see, I'm not posting any more pictures. After that last tea excursion, I'm done. That last tea night fucked me up. I'm still <laughs> drinking the tea. I'm just not blowing it up with the fucking syringes and shit no more. The last night I did that, I had a dream for Del Castro was chasing me on a fucking speedboat, and I could see his beard, and that's because of the weed, because I'm starting to dream in color now. It's like when you do fucking shroom. It's like when you do alpha brain. You start dreaming in black and white. Now that I removed the reefer, I'm starting to dream in color, and that's fucking scary, because I never had dreams. I don't remember even fucking dreaming. I pass out so hard at night on those fucking edibles. You know, I don't even have dreams. I wake up in the morning, and my eyes are fucking red. But... I've been having dreams. That's one thing about not smoking reefer mm -hmm. that I've been having very vi visual colored dreams. So the last week or so, this has been going on like for the last 10 days. I had a dream about my mother. I had a dream Fidel was chasing me. I had a dream I was doing comedy somewhere and I was bombing and I was cursing myself for getting on stage, you know. I just have these weird fucking dreams. <laughs> so if you want me to know what's going on, that's the only difference from the smoke and weed is that my fucking eyes, uh, that I'm having fucking colored dreams. That's the only difference I'm getting. That's what I hear. So for you, yeah, that's it. I'm just getting weird dreams and uh, I'm seeing them in color. But as Wednesdays, we have a guest today. I've known this guy for a long fucking time. I've seen him go from being an open micer to a real comic, and I have nothing but respect for this young man. Um, before the pandemic, he had a lot of things going on, like a lot of us, and the pandemic took a lot of those things from him. He was going to shoot a special. He had a couple things going on, so uh, I checked in with him. You know, we check in with each other once a month, and a couple weeks ago, I was talking to him, and I figured... Let me uh, put him on the show. He had a fucking uh, fucked up time during the pandemic. I mean, he didn't lose anybody or nothing like that. It was great, but he had a lot of things to lose. The things I lost, I didn't even sweat. I knew that people were going through rougher times, so I never made a big deal about him. I never even mentioned him until today on the interview when I lost. So it doesn't matter. Uh, we have our health. We have our families. We have our jobs. And sometimes that's the most important thing. That's what I've gotten from this fucking uh, last 15 months. That's the most important thing. So when you have all those things, and now my mind, like I said, I needed a couple months to pull the fucking layers off the artichoke. The artichoke is starting to show. It's like my dick. I'm uncircumcised. If you look at it, it's got the fucking skin on the top. I got to pull the skin back so you can see the helmet, the pink meat. It's the same thing with me. The pink meat is starting to come out, cocksuckers, so get ready. You know what I'm saying? I've been getting the itch, too. I'm not saying nothing. I think I'm going to start doing some guest spots here next month. I got a busy this month, ba baseball tournaments, softball tournaments. You know, I got a lot of shit going on. But I, I've been writing lately. Uh, thank God Mikey gave me the gift of the guitar. It's opened up my mind a lot uh, in different ways. I'm doing things with the guitar. I still suck, but at least I'm getting sounds out of it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Which is something that I never got before. I'm getting sounds out of it. I have an idea what I'm doing. No, I'm not ready to play for you fucking cocksuckers. <laughs> Come on, Jimmy. Uh, but uh, <laughs> thank you for the people who have encouraged me. There have been a lot of people who have sent me free material on the guitar, and it just shows me that... Uh, what comes around goes around, man. I helped you at one time, and now you guys want to help me back. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoy this interview with Mr. Josh Potter. Josh P. Hey, hey. There he is. Looking good. What's happening, you bad motherfucker? Dude, not much, man. Just getting back in the groove, baby. You getting Things on stage? Things are opening up. You getting on stage? I'm trying. I'm trying my best. Oh, shit. My bad. First of all, I got to give you props. Get it sturdy for you, you here. You're there fucking, we go, sorry. you're fucking, you're sticking it out in L.A. And I got to give you props for that, brother. Yeah, man, I got. Uh, I mean, I, I was presented with the choice of moving, and then um, it was, it was removed. <laughs> so I, I found myself with the uh, like, hey, I guess I could go wherever I want, really. But then I just, I just figure like, fuck it, man, I'm gonna stay. And, uh, and stick it out and see what happens. I just got here, it kind of feels like still. So 
And, you know, now maybe uh, L.A. comes down to, to my level a little bit. You know what I'm saying? We level up a little together. You know, I'm coming yeah, up, it's coming is. down. So yeah, yeah. We meet no, somewhere I see in the, the lineups and I see a lot of people are missing. And uh, I'm happy for a lot of the young guys that stayed. You know, it looked dark for a while, but uh, I, nobody knew where comedy was going. I mean, I can't imagine, like, last June, I didn't know where the fuck this was going. I had no intention of going on stage. I had no, nothing. I mean, and I thought about other comics. I kept in touch with as many. You know, I pushed that podcast till August till we left. Yeah. I mean, I pushed it all the way to the end. Scared, did it with a mask on. You know, I was scared to fucking infect guests. You know, it was just too rough. And uh, it broke my heart when I left a little bit. I felt like a quitter, you know. But I knew I wasn't quitting. I was just this was the evolution of my life you know i got to la like you you know ready to fucking stab a motherfucker on the bottom level you know not getting spots nobody talks to you you know people make fun of you little fucking remarks and you work yourself up and i saw you doing great before i left i mean you were really out there every night i know the podcast was getting numbers people were listening to you so you know, yeah, it was, uh, it day, was, I, was like, I mean, the beginning of this whole thing, when it happened, I was like, of course, is that like, it felt, um, like a personal attack. <laughs> the well, way I know it, for but, a you fact, know, everyone was going through it though. So you couldn't, I know for you a can't fact have that, that mentality. You lost you know? a lot more than what I lost. I know that you had a lot of things in the works. You had like a special, you had a couple great fucking things happening. And I remember telling Lee to send you my love. He, I know he, mm. he went on his podcast, and I go, send him my love. I know that his job was, because you had all these things. It was going to be your bust-out fucking year. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. lost, like, the Sopranos. I lost opening up for Joe at the Garden. Like, I was going to yeah, do that at the Square stuff, Garden, bro. 10 minutes, 15 minutes at the Boston Garden, the home of the fucking Boston Celtics. You know, I lost a lot, but I there was people who lost their lives. Of who course. gave a fuck about a comedy gig? You know what I'm saying? Like that's in June, I was kind of bummed and I was mad at the pandemic. But I'm like, there's fucking freezers filled with bodies. Whether the pandemic killed them, whoever killed them, Trump's cousin, I don't fucking know. But there were people were dying. Yeah. So I wasn't worried no, about sure. a fucking stupid comedy gig. You know, I, when people started opening up clubs, I got very angry because it was highly contagious. And I know yeah. you need to laugh and need to get out. But not at the expense of somebody getting sick. Every time there was a comedy show and there was 300 people in that room, somebody died. Yeah. Somewhere from no, the result I, of that fucking I remember uh, I, I had the same train of thought. Like, eventually it came down to the, the fact where I was, like, you know, sitting here getting pissed off about, you know, losing gigs and, and all that shit. Because like you said, I mean, my first headline, like headlining the clubs, I always, like, you know, you scratch and claw just to get a guest set at before and now you're headlining them and you're you know you're going on this run and then it all got wiped away and i i was pissed off and like upset but then like you said you know you see the bodies stacking up you see people who like you started really like toward the fall knowing people who got sick from it and my my you know my mom got it my sister everybody got it and it started like you know you're like this is bigger obviously than like you said like a comedy gig or whatever you know what i mean people are losing like their lives and their family members and all that shit so yeah, it's rough. And it, it even made me take like a more important, like personal inventory than just comedy too, you know, because I sat here without comedy for the first time in 12 years or whatever. And I was like, man, I'm realizing I don't really have much else, <laughs> you know, like there's not much else around me. Yet. Me neither. <laughs> so, I mean, but you got, you know, your daughter, you got your wife and everything like that. I, I realized, you know, I've been running around these past 12 years chasing a certain dragon and I wasn't really putting uh, the things into place to have a life outside of that kind of thing. And I need to, like, concentrate on that a little bit more, you know. I'm fucking you know, 35 for, now, you know. So I did the personal inventory also. It was kind of weird that you had no choice. At one point, you're in a room, you're alone. It's June. When the pandemic first started, I got to be honest with you, I was happy they were canceling gigs. I'm like, at least cancel till June. We will be back in July or whatever. You know, I could do Vegas and this. And then I just, uh, I lost. Like, I was like, there's so many bad things happening. 
you know, yeah. so many, like I see so many homeless and this, and then when I got this thrown at me about moving, you know, this was big on me, this fucking war on me, like, I didn't care about comedy, all I wanted was my daughter and wife to be happy and safe, and in fucking school, mm. and in fucking school, that was my thing, you know, so... This move for me, like Austin didn't really, wasn't uh, a thought. It didn't even come into my mind because I knew I was coming home. I wanted to come home. I had been done when I came back here to shoot in 2019. I just thought that I was missing too much and that I, I wanted my daughter to experience what I had in Jersey. And I'm happy. I'm just fucking generally even more, like, I don't know if you know, this has been 20, Two days since I smoked weed. How the fuck? No way. 22 fucking days. No reefer. You know, I think it was the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. They put something in those <laughs> motherfuckers that doesn't let me smoke anymore. I don't know what the fuck <laughs> happened, but. That's 22 so more days than me, my friend. I'll tell you. <laughs> oh, no. And I'm not craving it. I'm not in a bad mood. I'm not yelling at anybody. I'm not. Cur I don't have road rage. I didn't shoot a five year old in the stomach. And I, you know, <laughs> I have none of these fucking things going on, which is rare because when I first had to go off weed in prison, I was like a fucking monster the first week. I couldn't sleep. I was yelling at everybody. I was throwing pots and pans. But then after the settle in, you're like, ah, no reefer. But I just wanted to. I think I needed just to restart. At, like you know, like what's that thing you do with your computer? Yeah, when reboot. You, reboot. I just needed a reboot. You know, I had to slow down with the fucking drugs. I'm 58 years old. I'm eating 10,000 milligrams a day. <laughs> I'm walking Man. around. My skin feels like alligator skin. Now I got moisture <laughs> in my skin. My feet don't stink anymore. I had this stink coming out of my feet between the fungi toenail and the cheese. It was <laughs> murder. I would go to jujitsu and people would be looking around. What's that fucking stink? I started putting tea tree oil on my toenails. Now they're beautiful. I look like, fuck, I got like Elvis feet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the fungi toenail is done. That little stink in my fucking sock. I had like a little wink in my sock of cheese, and it smelled like Subway sandwiches in my fucking sneakers. <laughs> so I made changes everywhere. What have you done now? What have you got? What have you put together now? Well, I've been, uh, I mean, I now it's like things are opening again. So I've kind of been, you know, now it's like let's get a let's get our nut together. Let's get a nice living situation. Get out of this apartment. You know, I have a roommate. I'm fucking 35. I got a fucking roommate. Like I want to. You know, that's terrible. I got to get the fuck out. So that's my goal. I mean, I just want to have a nice setup, like an adult would for once. You know, and uh, afford that and like you know gather some things. You know, I don't know. Like uh, it's not like I know those things aren't going to make me happy, but it's like, you know, you get a couch, you get a couple things going, then you got a girlfriend and then you got a fucking, you know, a girl, that, you know, comes over once in a while, you have dinner and, you know, stuff like that. L normal shit, uh, as opposed to like, you know, fucking bringing home some bar hag at for it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just the differences in lifestyle in that kind of way come with, I feel like just having a, a living space, uh, you know, for myself. And I can grow from there, you know? So now we got the new studio going up and I'm going to move out that way. And then I, hopefully I can just, you know, walk to that, ride my bike or whatever, because I'm not driving out here at all. So, you know, that's the goal, man. And then hopefully, you know, down the road, I, I'd love, you know, I'd love to start a family. It's never been something I even thought of until the pandemic. I always thought like, yeah, maybe down the road or whatever. But I realized during the pandemic, the road is here. I mean, this is it, dude. I'm fucking mid thirties. Like now all of a sudden it went, it like crept out. I, I felt like I was 33, just starting to headline on the road. And then all of a sudden now I'm 35 and it's like, it didn't, it hasn't really started yet. And all of a sudden I'm 35. It's like, whoa, it's a bit of a shock in terms of, I don't know why the two years, but it's all of a sudden I'm kind of like, holy shit, dude, you're fucking getting up there. You know, Josh Potter, you're 35 years old. <laughs> at 35 years old <clears throat> I wasn't thinking about anything except comedy you know I was so every I was a loser in every other aspect I couldn't Same keep here. a job you know <laughs> I fucking hated jobs you know that's one thing about the pandemic like in June that I was I was cursing my comedian success because I was like you got to be really careful what you wish for because it yeah. just might happen I wished for not having a day job 
Now I'm sitting here on my hands all fucking day during the pandemic. Maybe I should go to Rouse and stock supermarket shelves or whatever. You know, I, I felt like I wanted to do something different during the pandemic. Like I just, like, how the fuck did I get to this point that I don't have a job now? I yeah, no, that makes sense. And you got to be careful what you wish for. So I didn't think at 35, I was grinding it out. I was snorting coke. I, I was bringing home bar hags. I was contacting diseases, you know, you're fingering yeah. people on triple runs. You know, there's no stability. You don't <laughs> give a fuck about living on couches. And I got to tell you something. No, yeah, that's the same here. And then the pandemic woke me up from that. It was weird. It was like, hey, man, like I would have kept, I would still be on this path. You know what I mean? But it was like, it was this pause in all of this that made me go like, whoa, dude, like this is what you've been doing this for, you know, 12 years. And I'm going to still keep doing it, by the way. I'm going to keep going hard. But it made me go like, hey, I should pay attention a little bit to becoming a man too, you know? Well, that didn't happen for me till I was 44. So you're <laughs> nine years ahead of me. Like when I was 44, I, I, I had nothing. I had nothing. I was a, a guy that had a, a couple movies under his belt and I couldn't cut it together. I was headlining, but I wasn't a headliner, you know, not even close, you know, and uh, I knew I had to get the drugs out of my life. That was the first step. And I got the drugs out of my life, and then my girlfriend became more important to me. And then my girlfriend ended up becoming my wife. And mm. And I still resisted it. I still resisted that normal life. Then my wife got pregnant. I was ready to quit stand-up in 2009. Oh, shit. A lot of people don't know that. But I was out. I was like, I'll open for Joe. You know, I wasn't doing spots at the store yet. I go, I'll open for Joe. I'll do spots at the ha-ha. And when my friends call me and spoon me movies, you know, I have friends that call you and say, you want three days on a movie? I'll do it. And then the podcast world came along, and that picked up stand up and that's how I got to this place but I was out I was out. checked I, out I had already known that I had been running from not having a family for 20 years like I had been I had once I got divorced it affected my inside so much that I didn't want to deal with that pain ever again and my wife just stayed on me you know she stayed on me and then I started turning over the business to her you know, I started asking her for advice. Should I take this gig? Is this gig worth it? And she started telling me no. And we became a team. And now everything has changed. I, I wish this would have happened 10 years earlier when I was 35. But I was too hard-headed and I was too stupid. So I applaud you for thinking <laughs> in that direction. That's the best applause there is. Oh, yeah. No, don't worry about nothing. That was my garlic pill. Sorry about that, people. <laughs> I promised I wouldn't fart on this podcast, but from time to time, shit happens. Hey, you know what I'm saying? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? And it smells tremendous. <laughs> That's the, these are the times when you need a mask. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, right, right now, if 10 people were in this room and smelt this fart, they'd put their mask on so fucking fast. <laughs> But, hey, it happens from time to time. You got to drop a bomb here and there just to let people know. I'm back. You know, I, the, I went, you know, I was in L.A. last week. I know. I heard you snuck out here for a little bit. You said. Ten That's hours. crazy. Ten hours. Wow. Really? I was supposed hour. to be there for three days. Wow. I, I took a look at Ventura. They closed the Chinese restaurant. They closed so many fucking things on Ventura. Oh, yeah. North Hollywood's a mess. It broke my heart. I looked at Lanc Lancashire. Yeah. And my heart was broken. So I basically, my Brett from some conscious jujitsu picked me up. He took me right to fucking ice cream cake. I got my weed. You know, I ordered my stuff. Uh, from there, I had to go to the dentist because my gums got all fucked up. I put caps on before I left. And my oh. gums got in fucking infected. I was waking up every morning spitting blood. Right away, for people who don't know me, I spit blood. I got cancer. I'm calling fucking, you know. <laughs> I'm at Brick Hospital telling them I got cancer. My, my, that I'm shitting to see if blood comes out of my ass because another one of my friends got diagnosed with uh, cancer. So mm. now for two weeks, I was spitting blood. I would come on the pot. I wouldn't say nothing. And then one day I told my wife, I go, I don't know what this is. It's con The blood is conglomerating behind these teeth. Oh, shit. And she looked at it and she goes, your gums are fucking horrible. 
take a picture and show the dentist. So I showed the dentist. Then she told me to go to a dentist here. That dentist told me I, I don't want to redo the work she did. Mm. Like if you need it. So I said, you know what? I got to go to L.A. anyway. I'll just see you. So I oh, stopped by her. Oh. She made a couple fucking things. She gave me a prescription for a cream. And then I had I checked into the hotel, the Holiday Inn on NoHo across from Denny's. Oh, yeah. I saw a fucking, I'm sitting there, and I see a tent with a crib next to it. <laughs> I probably and walked I, by you, by the way, when you were over there a couple really? times. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I go. I walk over there and do mics every now and then. And I said, you know what? I'm not fucking staying here tonight. I go, you know I what? I was walking down uh, Sunset up in the east part, like in Silver Lake area, in the night. And I wa- I'm walking up alone, you know, and there's a baby stroller at the corner. And I'm just like, I don't want to even look inside there because it's so fucking gnarly out here. You know what I mean? I don't even want to know what's in the baby stroller just in case. You know what I'm saying? So I just walk by and I pretend I didn't see nothing, you know, and I can get away with that kind of thing. You know, <laughs> no, I won't me. look either. Like, I was like, I don't I was just sitting outside waiting for Dean Delray. We we're going to go get some tacos. And I'm like, is that a homeless tent? with a crib next to it and under a tree. They had it perfectly. It broke my heart. Uh, yeah, you know, no, it's I, gnarly I crossed the street to see if there was a lady there. I would have thrown over 20 or got a milk or something, but there was nobody in there. So they just live in there and then they leave in the day. I don't know what the fuck it was. It, and it yeah. wasn't, listen, it wasn't the homeless. It wasn't the businesses. What I realized was my time was done in L.A. I had done sure. my time. Sometimes you do your fucking duty. You're done. I knew I wasn't going to go to the store. I said my goodbyes to the store already. I went to the building. I rubbed my name on the wall. I fucking sat on the stairs with my daughter. I told her a few stories. I did all this in July. So I made my peace with the store. I had made my peace with Los Angeles. I went out there just to take care of some stuff. Look, today I just my wife just went now to pick up the prescription that the doctor... Mm. See, the doctor here wouldn't give me the medication I needed, and he didn't want to lift my blood pressure medication. And that was the other thing. For the last fucking 60 days, no, fuck, I got surgery five months ago. For the last six months, I take my blood pressure twice a day. Mm. Is it fun. going down? Perfect. Nice. It was It was perfect. 120 over 80. Sometimes I wake up in the morning and it's 130 over 80, but I'm still in the neighborhood. Do you know what my blood pressure was in LA at three o'clock when I walked into the doctor's office? Oh my God. What was it? It was 180 over 100. Jesus. And he was like, Joey, what's going on? I go, give me 10 minutes because it was a new chick that took my blood pressure. Then he took it, and it was still 160 over 100. Oh. He goes, what's going on with you? Because we talk all the time, me and my heart doctor. I, I got one here in Jersey, but he's uptight. So I just talked to my fucking, he's a Jewish dude out in L.A. <laughs> I love this motherfucker. We talk about porn, and, you know, he's just a dirty fuck. I love him. He's great. He's 66. And uh, I went there. Just that's how much, how, how uncomfortable I was in L.A., when I got back to the hotel room, I'm like, I'm not even laying on that bed. Mm. I'm getting the fuck out of here. That's and great. And right I, on the same day, right back. Just on the same. I go, my back's going to be death tomorrow from sitting for 12 hours. But I don't yeah. give a fuck. I'm not spending the night here. I didn't know what to do in L.A. all day Friday. What was I going to do? Sit in my room? I'm not smoking yeah. pot. I didn't know where you were. I didn't know if you were in town. I didn't know if you were opening for Tom on the road. No, no, you sure. Know, I mean, uh, it's, uh, was leaving. Plus it's not even that open out here. I mean, it's No, there was nothing going on. I kept looking down the street and there, there was, there was, it was empty on Ventura. It was empty on Lancashire. Lancashire, I saw some weird stuff. They did clean up a lot. I didn't see. A lot of homeless in North Hollywood. Not how I did I notice in the last like yes. month, North Hollywood's gotten a little bit better. I mean, it was like I remember it was like Thunderdome down there for a little while. It, there was that that sign. I get out of the subway station there on North Hollywood, and I walk to the you know the corner there of Lancashire and uh, I forget the Burbank Boulevard, and there's that uh, big "Welcome to North Hollywood" like concrete triangle pyramid thing, and some people I assume homeless people 
picked it up and like moved it into the street because they and so they could sleep on that part of the the land. Like they took this concrete structure. I don't know how many people it took to lift them, but it was like so fucked up that they moved it so far away from where it was. It just stayed there. I was like, who's going to move that back? The cops aren't going to fucking move it back. No one's touching it. So it just stayed like in this middle of the road kind of area. That so train station yeah. was what pushed me over the top. <laughs> that train station was the station that I left because my office was right there. Yeah, sure. We taped the podcast right there. If you get off the train and walk to the corner and cross the street and keep going oh, and straight. I did it. That's why when I yeah, came to do your you show, hit, I did yeah. that exact thing. <laughs> you hit the office. You have no choice but to hit the office. So one afternoon, I think it was we did Joe McHale. I got out there like at four, and I took the long way around, you know, just to stop on Lancashire. I was going to go to a weed store something, you know. Yeah. And I went that way, and I made a right on that. And then there's a light next to the golf store, and people cross the street in between the train. They put a coffee shop there and shit. Yep. And I'm sitting there minding my own business. You know, I'm at the light, and I'm just looking around, listening to Ozzy's Boneyard or whatever the fuck got on Sirius. And I just look over to the left, and I swear to God, I see a lady waiting for the bus because there's a bus station there too the train mm-hmm, station mm-hmm. and then they don't let then there's cabs all the way to the corner you know if you yep. get dropped off there and a cop sees you it's a 200 dollars ticket you can't even get dropped yeah, that's off what, there. uh Leeds told me that you found that out the hard way yeah i got a 200 dollars ticket dropping my wife <laughs> yeah. off over there one day you can't even stop there so i'm i'm looking at this lady at this train for some reason i just looked over at this lady and i saw a fucking four by four Hit her right on the head and she fell onto Lancashire. Oh my God. And then I go, What the fuck is that? And I see the guy start hitting people one at one at a time. <laughs> Four in the afternoon, they're going down. Now you know exactly where I am at that light. Yeah. He's 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 probably hit by now three people. Oh my god. He hit god. a lady and he hit like two guys. But he hit a chubby guy. And the chubby guy got up. Now, I'm thinking it's a crazy homeless guy, right? Like, right away, you see mm-hmm. a stick flying. You want to assume nationalities and mm-hmm. racisms <laughs> and all this shit, right? So, like, I'm sitting there going, this has to be some crazy fucking, you know, whatever. And next thing you know, the fat guy throws a punch and he hits the guy. And I could see that, you know, once people started getting hit, they started spreading. People were like, what oh, the fuck's sure. going on? So now the clouds parted, and I can see the true color of the sky. I see the guy with the axe handle, not the axe handle, but a four-by-four. And he gets punched in the face. He kind of, like, loses consciousness. He looks at the chubby guy. The chubby guy picks up his suitcase and just dodges across the street. Now I see the guy with the four-by-four chasing him. He's got no T-shirt on. He's got a warrior's vest on. And he's a white oh my dude, God. so all my racist whatever went out the window, right? Like, I'm like, oh, it was the Mexican dude. You know, like, I thought it was, like, a fucking illegal or something. No, it was a the, white those dude. Those meth tweakers, man, those those meth tweakers. Yeah, they be, those meth tweakers, they'll fucking stab you in Silver Lake and shit. So I'm watching this guy go across the street. Like, he runs right in front of me, and he's chasing the chubby guy, and the chubby guy is scared because he hit him with everything he got. And fucking Rambo didn't even move. He just like <laughs> was a little rattled. And the next yeah. thing you know, I go, you know what? I'm making a fucking U-turn. I'm going to hit this kid with the car. Because <laughs> I could catch him by the office. And yeah. there's never witnesses by the office. There's never right. anybody by that office. Like, there's never anybody on that street. You could shoot a motherfucker in front of that <laughs> funeral parlor. And no, nobody will see you. So I made a fucking U-turn. And I made the, the, the street name is Hartsook, isn't it? Hard I think so. That was where my office was. I made the left, and when I made the left, I, w- I waited for him at that corner to see where <laughs> he was going to go, and I could pick him yeah. off with the car. The motherfucker <laughs> saw me. He ran up, and he saw me with the car, and he turned around, and he ran back towards the train, and he hooked the fucking left back to Lancashire. He oh. threw the wood on the floor. He, he knew you were going to run him over? You think? I, he knew I was up to something because I, was, oh. I looked at him like, Okay, just run into the street. I'm going to hit you with this car. I didn't know I was going to hit him and keep going. 
Or I was going to hit him and dial 911 and say it was an accident and then put the two by four in his hand and there'd be three yeah, bodies yeah. laying the around. The witnesses you know, will be like, this guy was running around like a loony tune yeah. anyway, so he just ran in the street in front of the car. That's all so I when I passed him, I actually <laughs> looked up the corner and that was really sad. The chubby guy was on the floor and there was a puddle of blood laying to his head. Oh, my God. And I went that's home. the kind of shit, dude, that I don't that's know. That's like, what a way to either. fucking go, you know? Just some guy at the train station. At the train four fucking four. station. And I'm like, I went home and told my wife, I think it's time to abandon ship. And then she went to the post office, which is right down the block from there. Because yeah. if you cross that street, there's a, there's a bus station and then there's like a coffee shop. They put a coffee shop in there. Across mm -hmm. from the coffee shop is the post office. And along that line, they used to be homeless people. They cleaned them up. And the day yeah. she went, she couldn't get in there because one of the homeless guys stabbed the other homeless guy and was bleeding around right the fucking street right there by the post office. She's like, whoever's getting T-shirts aren't getting them this week because I went to make a fucking delivery and some guy got stabbed. The cop wouldn't yeah. let her go back there. So I'm like, The this guy is... who sells socks on the train just got stabbed. You know, and like you fucking, you know, you're from Buffalo. You know, you've yeah. seen crime in Buffalo. Sometimes they tailgate and the Buffalo Bill guy will hit another guy in the head with a helmet. You know, that's <laughs> yeah, Buffalo. Yeah. That's Buffalo. You know, <laughs> New York City's New York City. You're going to get mugged up at the eye. You accept that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You accept that. You go down to Camden, New Jersey, you're going to get mugged. You, you know, you, you go to Philadelphia <laughs> now, you might get hit in the head. You know what I'm saying? But that's the East Coast. We've always had that. For that, I, yeah. didn't, I didn't grow up watching California, going to California. To see that type of stuff. I never saw that type of stuff in California. Right. And that's why I kind of feel like I I should stay. Do you know what I mean? Like I it's part of the reason where I'm like, oh, I'm feeling it's not that I'm feeling more comfortable with everything, but it is more like everyone who I felt uncomfortable around seems to be out of their element now. Whereas I'm just kind of like, yeah, it's like, you know, the crime, whatever, you know, it's homeless people, it's crime. Like I have that. <laughs> you know, people used to come from New York City to Buffalo and be really sketched out. So that I, I always found funny because I always found, thought Buffalo was like a small town. You know what I mean? I never thought of it as like scary in any way. I always felt safe everywhere I went, but I'd have friends come visit and they'd be like, this is gnarly, dude. Like you live over B here. Buffalo's like, yeah, no joke. <laughs> so, Buffalo's no joke. Know. I told you, I used to do Rob Liederman's room way yeah. in 98. And I used to take the bus from Port Authority up there. So I was at that bus station a couple of times. Yeah, dude. One day I'm in Buffalo, I'm minding my own fucking business. There was a McDonald's close to there or something, and I walked over to the McDonald's because my bus was delayed or some shit, and I bought one of those breakfast sandwiches with the potato and the fucking soda and the apple pie, and I just finished eating it. I don't want a litter in Buffalo. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah, when yeah, I was yeah, a kid, yeah, I was yeah. a litterer, and then you, you got to make peace with Mother Nature. Mother Nature's a motherfucker. You know, next, you, throw peace, you throw a can out the window, next thing you know, you're in Florida in a hurricane. So you got to <laughs> yeah. be careful with Mother Nature. She'll drop some karma on you. So I was walking the bag to the garbage, something I would never do. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, McDonald bag, throw it on the fucking floor. But I was a comic. I was trying to you know, be the right person. So I go, let me go over and throw this away. Dog, I'm not 10 steps from the garbage can and some Buffalo brother, because Buffalo brothers are cool as shit. He came <laughs> yeah. running up to me, huffing and puffing. He's like, yo, chubby dude. I go, what? He goes, chubby dude. You want to buy a gold chain? I go, that ain't gold. He goes, this is gold in a motherfucker. I just took it off the dude's neck. And I went in my pocket. I had a 20 that I paid for the breakfast. The breakfast is $4. So I had like $15 and change. I go, all I got is 15 and change. It's like, good to go. <laughs> I just had that gold chain until about 10 years ago. I swear to God. No shit. That gold chain was solid. I don't know what, I lost it in a hotel because when he ripped, when he ripped it off the person's neck, the lock stayed on their neck. So I had a, use a, uh, like a pin and the pin finally fucking popped. Yeah. I was too lazy to go to the jury store. <laughs> Still <laughs> got the guy's hair. That in the, fucking in the, chain in the had locks. DNA on it, blood. That black <laughs> dude told me, yo, chubby dude, you want to buy a chain? I, I'm like, I'll buy a fucking chain. I don't give a fuck. I used to live like two blocks from that train station. That's what oh, my friends shit. were talking about when they came to visit. They were like, this is, this is weird. That's a here, sketchy dude. bus station, dog. Yeah. I went there one night and I saw some sketchy shit. Like I, I always got out of there in the daytime. But one time, yeah. like I had like a, I think I was going, that's right. I used to go to Buffalo to sneak into Canada. 
So I had a, my friend's father was a gambling dude, and he was a high roller up in Canada. Ooh. So they had a back road. He didn't even have oh. to go to the border. So he would take me to the back road to the casino. Up by like Ottawa and shit? Yes. And yeah, I would, yeah, yeah. not even Ottawa. I would get off oh, and I would sooner. be close okay. to, I'd be in London, Canada. Okay, yeah, like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Where you take Kitchener the bus to Mont, I would take the bus to Toronto from there. But the mm. funny thing was when I came back, he wouldn't pick me up. I'd take the bus back. So when I'd get to the Buffalo, the, the, when they checked my paperwork, they'd put me in the computer and they'd see all those felonies. And they'd go, how right. the fuck did you get in here? When did you get in here? And I was like, I was here Thursday. You were here. You're the one that let me in. He's like, I would never let you in here. Look at this crime record you have. I'm like, I'm telling you, I got in here by you. It was how you. How else did I get in here? Yeah. You, Osmosis. you, and you. And all of them like, no, it wasn't. We, were, we didn't work on Thursday. I go, yes, you did. I would do that constantly. And then after 9-11, they got hip to me. And they're like, listen, you ever come back in here again, we'll fucking throw you under the jail. So yeah, no I'm not allowed Toronto. in uh, Canada myself. And growing up in Buffalo, it was like such a shitty thing because you're 10 minutes from the... I was going to Canada all the fucking time. And, you know, you don't even know that when you're like, you get a DWI in Texas, you don't know that you're banned from Canada for like a decade or whatever. But you find out real quickly in Buffalo that you're banned. And uh, I got stuck one time because I didn't realize that it was like a 10-year fucking ban. And they were like, you know, they flagged me and they did all that shit. And uh, I started asking around because I started getting just for laughs, like auditions and stuff. And I was like, what if I get this? How am I going to get up there? You know, and a bunch of comics who had DUIs, they showed me like where people would run, like almost like Mexicans run across the, the border to come into America. It's like that to go into Canada. They, they show you the routes and you're like, you're just you they'll be speaking French on the other side of the woods, basically. So you'll know you're there. So I was like, Oh, really? okay. so I, you learn a little, ra- yeah. A bunch of comics uh, that were New York comics used to like make that jog. Like when they would get the festival, if they couldn't get into the country, they would be like, I can't afford a lawyer or whatever to pay to like fix this for me. So they, there was like little routes that a couple of guys would tell me about running across the border to go to Canada, to go to just for laughs of all things. Josh Potter. It's been really good to see you, man. You're uh, good to see you too. Thank you so much for having me. You know how long have we known it. each other? Like I, I don't even know how many times I went to Buffalo and you hooked me up and fucking we get the fucking beat. You know the mayor of Buffalo contacted me Byron about Brown? five years ago <laughs> when I was at Buffalo. One of the last times I was at the casino. Oh, okay. The casino called me, and they're like, you have a call downstairs from such and such. And I called, and there was some lady, and she's like, the mayor would like to speak to you. No way. Yeah, and they're like, thank you for fucking talking about Buffalo like you do. <laughs> These fucking idiots that put ranch on their wings. I want to shoot them all. But That's you've they restored do, they. that. They fucking, they no, they was, the she was so happy. put a bullet in your brain. If you- <laughs> oh, no. She was like, fucking idiots fucking ranch dressing fucking <laughs> buffalo was built on blue cheese and you live by those standards thank god you know and i was like hey i'm old school my you know i i went to buffalo the first time in 84 and that was i fell in love with that city i've never met a person from buffalo i didn't like when i love I was the people in, there i miss when it so i was much in boulder when i was in boulder i had three or four friends that were from buffalo and I couldn't believe how fucking crazy and real they were. <laughs> and then when I got locked up, I was locked up with a couple brothers that were from Boulder. And I couldn't believe how real they were. Like people from Buffalo, they, they you know, they're not going to have no skinny jean motherfuckers in Buffalo. Not the Buffalo I remember. I still remember going to Buffalo to see Rick James. Yeah. And I can't tell you what that was like. You saw him in Buffalo, too, so that's cool. In I mean, Buffalo, it must have been a small show. White chicks with little. sperm breath, you know, because there was a ton of white chicks ready to suck Rick James's dick. I never saw All anything like that. <laughs> the, most people sign up, like, after my shows, they get online to take a picture. Not Rick James. They get online to suck his dick. That's it. Those, <laughs> yeah. If you're a white chick with blonde hair, you're sucking <laughs> Uncle Rick's dick. There's no Me Too. There's no movies. There's no script. <laughs> You know, Rick just will slip you a Valium for, and then give you a breath mint afterwards. Sukalamink, you dirty bitch. You paid, <laughs> you paid 20 for the show. I swear to God, I went up there. People were giving me pills in the audience. 
It was I, it was nineteen eighty four. I will never ever forget that. And I fell in love with Rick James in seventy eight with you and I. I go back with Rick James to the fucking first time. I was just listening to Rick James the other night. Street Street what's that album he did? Street songs. It is fucking brutal. He did <laughs> not fuck around Uncle Rick. I used to see him at Buffalo's, the stores. Buffalo's best son. He used to, he used come, to come to the to store. Comedy clubbers around Buffalo too. He'd show up to different places, different venues and everything all the really? time. Really? Perform. Yeah, he would no just show up shit. in like bars and do sets. It was crazy. Like just do sing and shit like that and like People tell stories about it all the time. You go to all the bars. They talk about, oh, Rick James has been in here. You know, they got his picture on the wall and shit. They got autographs and shit. He's graves in Buffalo. Have you been to his grave? Never. Never. It's beautiful. Next time I go to Buffalo, I'm going to go to his grave. I met him at the comedy store. store. I met him at the comedy store, and I went up to him, right? Chewy introduced me to him, the doorman. I went up to Chewy. I go, I got to meet Rick James. And I don't want to meet nobody. If you know anything about me, I don't want to meet nobody. But there was something about Rick James I had to tell him. Of course. So I met him. I shook his hand. I go, I'm a big fan from you and I. I told him all the albums I had. I told him I saw him in 84 in Buffalo. And I go, let me tell you something. When I first started comedy, one of my best jokes was about you. Because when I started comedy in 91, maybe two years later, it was when he tied the chick up and burned her with a crack pipe and shit. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm like, Rick. I got to be honest with you. The first good joke I wrote was about you. I thought I, I don't remember the joke, and I'm not going to give it any justice. It was like if if I picked a black superhero, it would be like Rick James because he burned <laughs> you with a crack pipe that's never been done before. You know, It was something <laughs> stupid, maybe a blowtorch. I don't fucking know, but he was very nice. <laughs> and then shortly after that, he died. Mm. Like maybe a year after that, he died. I never saw him at the store again, but it was... Uh, I think that was one of my biggest nights at the store meeting him. He was great. That's and he hooked wonderful. up with Mooney afterward. I remember that oh, Mooney sure, and him yeah. were talking. Mooney and him were talking and Eddie Griffin. He was good. He was good to everybody. So every time Paul Mooney would come to town to Buffalo, he would have he would regale you with stories with Rick James too. Like he would it'd be his favorite subject. So you get to hear from him kind of like about a guy who came out of Buffalo. So it was fun every time he came to town. Rest in peace, of course. But, Rest in uh, peace. Yeah, both of them. Yeah, Fuck of them, both of them. Josh Potter, what are your plans, buddy? Where can these people see you? Because you're a great man. I'm sorry well, about what you. happened to you last year because I knew you had a lot of big things that were about to fucking blow up in your favor. But you know <laughs> what, bro? You didn't lose nothing. No, you got you're right. wiser. And, I, and like you, you said, stronger. I, I, the perspective, I, uh, you know, I, it could have been way worse and I didn't lose a loved one or myself, my own <sighs> life or my health in any way. I didn't even get sick. I didn't even get sick when I got the fucking second dose of that shit. I didn't get any. I didn't You're from Buffalo, dog. Shit. That 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 Pfizer don't do dick to you. You got that <laughs> yeah, fucking. Yeah, yeah. You got that blue cheese in you. That's I, I think if you eat blue cheese, you don't get COVID. I really do because all my <laughs> blue cheese it. friends didn't get COVID. None of my Buffalo <laughs> friends got COVID. I checked with the one guy. He's fine. He's still selling cars. You got any dates on the books? Anything? I do. Uh, I'm uh, well. I'm doing my podcast. It comes out every Tuesday. Just search the Josh Potter Show on uh, YouTube. Subscribe or whatever. Uh, but I got June 9th. I'm going to be in Tampa, Florida, at the Tampa Improv, and then the day after June 10th, Orlando Improv. So those are the two big ones. So I hope I see people out at those. You coming up to Jersey anytime soon? Or anything? I could say hello. To I you, hope give so. you a hug. I'd like to get up to the Stress Factory. I, you know, people keep asking, like, "Are you coming here? Are you coming here?" And, I, and I'm telling them, like, I'm coming anywhere people book me. I, I told. My guy who's booking my dates, I said, grind me into fucking dust. Like, let's go. So um, hopefully I, I get to go everywhere and hopefully I'll be up to Jersey soon. But these are the only two dates I have so far. And I'm supposed to hear back, uh, I think, in a couple of days here about some the rest of the summer and the fall. So hopefully I'll have more coming soon here. You start the fourth wall. You still doing spots around town, stuff, working it out. Oh, yeah. I go to the fourth wall almost every other day noon one o'clock you know and then i'm getting some sets here and there now and other shows and uh the improv uh and you know the store's opening back up i'm hoping to work my way into there too soon so um it's a new era or whatever there so i'm hoping to uh hop aboard that train and see if i can get get some sets out that way too you know well if i could help you with emily let me know if i could oh, do thank you thank you for you because i know you're a hard worker I know you've been at it for a while. I still remember you and me in Buffalo eating tacos or some shit. Oh, the donuts! 
Oh yeah, the, the donuts, donuts. And then, uh, the voodoo. The first time they? you came, the first time you came, you brought the banana bread shit with oh, you. Oh fuck! 2011 got, got that mailed over. It was right after Yoshi like almost killed himself or whatever, and uh, I remember Ari telling me to like relax on it, but I didn't listen. And I, I remember, I think that's where we bonded, though, because I ate so much of it and I wasn't a piece of shit afterwards. <laughs> and then, but, was, the, but the one morning chilling. you took me for donuts. Oh, yeah, the donuts. What's the famous donut place up there that's uh, fucking... We went to, uh, what the oh. hell was it called? Uh, Paula's, Paula's. Called. Paula's, and they had like a cream donut, and the fucking oh, cream yeah. was sensational. I fucking hate donuts, but I love that, fu- you know, I love yum yum donuts. I'm not a Dunkin' Donut man. They fucking suck these donuts no, in yeah. Jersey. But Paul is fucking, a special. Paul's a fucking delicious. Paul is a oh, you yeah. took me for donuts. I was like, that was. I told Lee, I go, Lee, I could eat fifteen of them, but <laughs> I didn't want to be a fucking slob in front of Josh Pilot. You know? <laughs> I told Tom Segura, I ate, ate fucking donuts. I love you, buddy. I appreciate I you coming you on. Uh, good luck to you. If you need something with the comedy store, let me know if I can help you with Emily at all. Thank I'll put in a word for you to get you a showcase or at least a tape. And uh, I'm sorry you had these gigs taken away from you, but let me tell you something. You're a great young comic, so and you're a great guy, so it's going to all come Thank back you. to you, brother, tenfold. You got my word Thank on that. Thank you so Trust much. Me. I love you for everything. I, I It means the world to me to get to come on your show and talk to you. You know I love you, and uh, I miss you out here, but you know I'm happy that things are going so well for you out there, man. You look good. I'm glad you're starting to feel good. You're being around people that you love. So that's tremendous. And uh, congratulations on all that. Well, I love you. And let's stay in touch. Okay. Don't For forget. Sure. Don't be a stranger, cocksucker. Give my of best course, to my Buffalo. Friend. Blue cheese with wings and go, fuck your mother. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I love stay, you, buddy. Thank stay you. Stay black. Me. Thank you, brother. All right, you fucking bloodsuckers. I hope you enjoyed that fucking little tete-a-tete with Josh Potter. He's a good kid. Follow him on Twitter. Don't forget his podcast drops every Tuesday. And he's just like me. That's me fucking 20 years ago trying to put the pieces together. Support. Support. Make somebody's day. That's what this whole fucking movement has been about is making somebody's fucking day. Whether it's been the Patreon or the podcast, I never stopped because I know you guys. You know what I'm saying? Even if I come on here and I'm confused, I still I'm thinking of you guys at all times. So thank you very much for watching the show today. Thank you for watching on Monday. Thank you for always having my back. Uh, Patreon, the whole thing, we're still doing our thing. And uh, I love you, cocksuckers. When I get dates, when I'm ready to fucking headline, I will let Patreon people know first and then so on and so forth. But I can feel the itch coming. So I'm happy about that. And it's all because of you guys. Thank you very much. And I'll see you next week. Now for a word from our sponsors and happy motherfucking Memorial Day. All right. I want to thank my man, Josh Potter, for coming on the podcast today. But most importantly, I want to thank you guys for supporting our podcast, listening, busting my balls, giving me love, whatever the fuck you do, encouraging me on the guitar or making me hit myself in the head with it, whatever. I'm happy you guys are here. But before we leave... I want to talk to you about our sponsors because we got the best sponsors in the business. They start with CBD Lion. Listen, the big craze right now in this country is CBD. I just went through a surgery and CBD Lion was there with me from A to Z. From the cream to the roll-on to the surgical tape. I mean, listen, CBD Lion is the best. I always loved them, but after my surgery, I love them more. You're asking me, Joey, I don't know much about CBD. That's great. Neither did I. How did I learn about it? You start by going to CBDLion.com. Read. Read the third-party lab results. Read about the elements it treats. Read what CBD might work for you, whether it's insomnia, knee pain, back pain. If you got a fucking problem, CBD's got an answer. A CBD Lion's got an answer. So go to CBDLion.com right now. Take a look at the great selection of products they have, from the flour to the cream to the roll-on. And pick one and get 20% off by putting in Joey, Joint, or Church. I'm going to give you 20% off delivered right to your fucking house from CBD Lion. Who takes care of you like that on a Wednesday? Nobody, cocksuckers. The Joint is also brought to you by one of my all-time favorites, Zip Fucking Recruiter. This goes out to all the busy moms out there. Did you know that recent data shows that all the female-owned businesses, one in three is owned by a mom? 
That's right. How does a mom find time to hire for their business while she's juggling a family? Want me to tell you how? Zip Recruiter. And right now you can try Zip Recruiter for free. Free, free, free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Joey. Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash Joey. Talia Goldstein is a mother of two. She also is the founder of a matchmaking company, The Three Day Rule. Her business is constantly growing, and she needs to hire new matchmakers every month. That's a tough role to fill. So who does she call? Zip Recruiter, the matchmaker for matchmakers. Their powerful matching technology will help find the right people with the right experience, and it actively invites them to apply for your job. She's not the only one. Four out of five employers who post on Zip Recruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Where are you going to get that type of action at? Zip Recruiter. So what Italia did, she went and got Zip Recruiter. The same thing I'm telling you to do. If you have a small business, a large business, I don't care whether you have three employees or 3,000 employees, Zip Recruiter is for you. So right now, you can try Zip Recruiter for free. Joey, what are you talking about? Nothing is free. Free. At ZipRecruiter.com slash Joey. Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash Joey. Try it for free just by going to ZipRecruiter.com dot com slash joey zip recruiter is the smartest way to hire i want to thank zip recruiter i want to thank cbd lion but i want to thank you fucking savages for always having my back regardless of whether we do a zoom a loom a doom whatever the fuck we're doing we're trying here and i'm trying to put a smile on your face i'm trying to turn that frown upside fucking down i love you cocksuckers again i want to thank zip recruiter I want to thank CBD Lion. I want to thank fucking DraftKings. I want to thank, who was it on Monday? Uh, the Manscaped. F- Manscaped. Shave them nuts. Memorial Days this weekend. Use code Joey and get 20% off. I want to thank all my sponsors. I want to thank you guys. I love you guys. Don't forget, go to DraftKings. Sign up. They send you an email every day that nobody else sees with different fucking little scams. And even if you could win yourself 50 bucks, what, you wouldn't take 50 bucks? Go fuck yourself. I love you guys. Have a great weekend. I love Zip Recruiter. I love CBD Line. I love you motherfuckers. Here we go. See you Monday, cocksuckers. Happy Memorial Day weekend. Be safe.